Brooklyn Independent Television. Caught in the Act is supported in part by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. Coming up. Full camera, camera speed. Car 1 C11, take 4. Mark. On the set of Red Hook, a TV pilot created by the Television Writers Program at LIU. A year ago, they were learning how tough it is to get the script ready. If you were on a television show, you would be writing that scene immediately. Because we need it. We, we got to get on the stage and shoot this thing. Now they're trying to bring their words to life. It's where the rubber hits the road. It's where we get real actors in front of the camera. In rehearsal with House of Waters, a trio that defines the term world music. Everything from South American music to American jazz to folk music of Romania to uh, West African music to Indian classical music. But they don't stop with music. And, uh, this is something we built in our backyard. It's a uh, little extracurricular activities. This is called a bower. And one person goes in, we, we close the circle of the waves. At the Rats Company, that's Rats for Russian Arts Theater Studio, the members come from all over. Boom. Yeah. But the philosophy comes straight from the Russian masters. Reality cannot mirror reality. It has to be skewed every time by, by your personality. Because otherwise it is, um, it's no room to grow. <laughs> like wave bow, no? They're all caught in the act. Art in Brooklyn. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Yeah, 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 the, the catering's right here, yes. Yeah. Hey, Jerry, it's Norman. Uh, tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's weather forecast is brutal. I'm Norman Steinberg, and I am the creator and the director of the TV Writer's Studio at Long Island University's Brooklyn campus. When I created this, I thought, wouldn't it be great to translate, transfer the uh, real life experience of working in, on a television show, a television series, into the classroom? Uh, Joe, personally, to rewrite the entire script. I hope you don't mind. No, I got no problem with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, but I mean, let's let's try to do it. I want, and I tell you what. We, we come out of here and uh, scenes have to be rewritten. If we can rewrite them here, all the better. But if not, it's, you don't get the latitude to write this scene. Write the scene that you need to write by next Monday. That's not the way it works. You, if you were on a television show, you would be writing that scene immediately. Because we need it. We, not, we gotta get on the stage and shoot this thing. We would be doing one episode, like three or, three or four weeks straight, an episode a week, a week of hiatus or two weeks of hiatus, and then we're back and we're ready to shoot another episode. And that's the way it goes. Uh, that's the way it goes in the real world. Car 4, Dean 40D, take back. My name is Angel Castillo. I am production manager. Uh, my name is Brandon Beck. I'm one of the editors. I'm also the sole director and cinematographer, sound guy for the behind the scenes documentary. Christine Ekman. I'm working in script supervision. My name is Jorge Rivera. Uh, I am one of the co-writers, uh, assistant director on the production. Started out with about 20 people in our program and broke up into two groups. One group wrote, a, wrote an hour and the, the second group wrote, wrote an hour. Which were both, I mean, really they were both very introductory episodes. Now to a like 20 minute pilot presentation, which we're on day 
four of production. So that we have a video companion piece to the two scripts that we wrote over the last year and a half. We're all exhausted. We picked out certain scenes that either introduced a character or just hit a certain core emotional note with the characters. Things that really flesh out and explain the universe of Red Hook. kind of nuclear beats, uh, nuclear in the sense of the nucleus of the scene. The two, the two nuclear beats of this scene seem to be establishing kind of the, the friendship dynamic between Bernie and Joe and just establishing that Bernie is kind of the studs turkle of Red Hook, that he's kind of, he's got his fingers in a lot of pies, like that Al Pacino movie. Um, so yeah. I arrived there because he's escaping the house. Yeah. Right. So, so we establish so, so that Bernie's a confidant, you know. Those three things are sort of there. <laughs> the classroom has been sort of theoretical, like this is what we would do, and this is what we think it'll look like, and this is what we hope it'll be. It's past theoretical now, it's where the rubber hits the road, it's where we get real actors in front of the camera, uh, reading the lines, acting the lines that we've written. What the characters look like, what they sound like what the neighborhood is. But then, you know, when you actually get on set, what looked good on paper suddenly doesn't work for whatever reason. It took a while to get to the point where it really w was palpable how worth it it is. Uh, well, it's a very interesting experience because, you know, in the, for the last year and a half, uh, the classroom was basically a writer's table. Um, it, it was run as if we were in the real world writing uh, a television pilot. So there was very little instruction and a lot of at real actionable, you know, writing experience. Might behoove us to try, like, reconsidering the action of the scene, yeah, right. like make it more active. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe Bernie's in the middle of doing something and Joe has to help him or, you know, just trying to come up with something a little more to the scene besides just a conversation, I'm would not it, sure. Would it be tasteless if Bernie was trying to get one of the Liberty Holding signs and he just yeah. couldn't reach it? Because Something he's like in that, a maybe. Wheelchair? Um, Perhaps. What if he has one of those like Walmart extendo claws things for like grabbing <laughs> stuff off of high, high shelves? It's, this has been a little bit uh, eye-opening and that it, it's saying, well, maybe, that, maybe those weren't the best lines. Maybe, maybe our, my classmates had some points about, you know, it could have worked a different way. Some takes I was like, yeah, that works, and other takes I was like, well, maybe not, you know, so um, it's, it's hard to say. I think I've learned a lot from what does work what kind of dialogue works on camera. He wants, the, he wants everything. Is he doing something underhanded? Probably. Yeah, he's buying up yeah, and running buying. people out. He's running people out. He's coming in and he's going to demolish and re redo He's the Red brain's Hook. capital of the exactly. Red Hook. You know, last year we were all writers. And this year's, uh, you know, class production intensive was all about pre-production and, and getting prepared for the process of shooting this thing. So uh, I think the big difference now is that we're, we're, we're now uh, writers, and we're, we're not just writers, but we're directors, producers, assistant directors, and grips, and gaffers, and editors, and uh, PAs, and sound people, and that's, uh, many of us have never done that before. Some of us have, many of us haven't, so it's a baptism by fire, which has been very interesting and very, very fruitful, and a um, uh, very rewarding experience for, for many of us, I have to say. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from this, and what I learned is this is possible. This is possible, and I've worked on a lot of a lot of productions, and they're as professional as anything. However, you know they're still students, so some of them uh, they're learning. 
the learning. And and what what I've seen is that they really they really do the job. But on production, we've seen this thing that we've been conceiving and working on and trying to make real finally materialize. Like like it is coming out of the ether. It is becoming tangible, real, physical. So this has been, for me, particular. I have felt like this is what has made all the tuition, all the class days worth it. Hey man, what's happening? We're House of Waters. Uh, House of Waters uh, comes from the idea that nature and, and humanity find a, a common ground. Uh, additionally, having a bunch of different rivers coalesce into the same, into, this, into the, the one central point, building that community is uh, kind of the concept behind the name House of Waters. I play the hammered dulcimer. Uh, I've been playing since a little kid. I really enjoy it. Most of the music in the States with the dulcimer is American folk music and classical music. Um, so that was my background for a long time until I started getting into world music, which is how I met these guys. My name is Luke Notary. I uh, play the drum set and percussion and uh, some other instruments that are a little more obscure. I also started when I was very young studying with my dad. Just committed myself to music. I'm loving that way, that way of life. So, here we are. My name is Moto Fukushima. I'm from Japan, and I play six strings electric bass. When I was uh, like a little kid, I started to do with a classical piano study, and I picked up bass uh, 15 years old. I play different kinds of music. I play jazz, South American music, also, I play Japanese traditional music. I play Japanese string instruments, shamisen, too. So we all met maybe five years ago, kind of in the New York music scene. And um, we met and we knew kind of instantly that we had a very good chemistry together. Since then, we've been writing original music and sharing all of our experiences and just bringing it into what we believe is a, is a very true sound, very accessible sound to a lot of people. Uh, we've done two records. Our first uh, CD, Elsewhere, uh, came out in 2008. And our second CD, Peace the Coats, came out in 2009. The third album is kind of, I think, the amalgamation of all of what we have brought to the music table, at least this far. We've been moving around and, and traveling around the world. I've been in India for the past year and a half, studying music out there. Luke's been touring with Cirque du Soleil for the past year and a half. Uh, Moto's been in New York and, and playing with great jazz guys here and, and South American guys here. And being able to combine all of these influences into a, into a new composition, into a new album. We've been able to not only just travel to these places, but listen to as much as, as possible. Everything from South American music to American jazz to folk music of Romania to uh, West African music to Indian classical music. The range is infinite and uh, playing the instruments that we play and having the ears that we have grown, we've been able to incorporate a lot of this, what we've enjoyed from these musics into our own music uh, while still keeping it honest to who we are. Our composition is very interesting because uh, it sounds like very traditional but also it's very pop and modern. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. it's like very like opposite side so some mm -hmm. people say like oh it sounds like uh, like my country's music right people yeah, say so many times yeah but it's like no nationality it's really the us you know yeah. music yeah. from the us and the cool thing about that is that when we write music together it tends to flow in a really natural way you know Moto will come up with an idea Max will feed off that, I'll feed off that, and we're all just mirrors for each other. It gives it a really nice direction, always, and it always brings something, something unique. For sure. This is, uh, you know, we're all, we're all musicians, but sometimes we like to do other kind of art forms just as a different kind of outlet, you know? And this is something we built in our backyard. It's a uh, little extracurricular activities. This is called a bower. There's these little birds called bower birds, and they build these elaborate nests on the ground. So basically, we decided to build a, a life-size, human-size bower. It's a place of meditation, practice, worship, you know, however you want to do it. It's, it's all about the weaving and the thatching, and it's all handmade. One thing we love to do is, is bring um, dancers and other artists into our show because we have a fun time feeding off of other art forms, painting, dance, whatever it may be. All these people who are friends of ours, yeah. who are super talented, we can mesh with them. And that's what Brooklyn really has to offer, this wide community. If, even if they're a painter or a dancer or a sculptor, they're all out there trying to meet as many people as they can, uh, including people in a different artistic genre. So being able to incorporate them into our show is really uh, inspiring. We have like a different outputs, yeah. but inside probably we have similar kind of motivation. We just chose music, we chose dance, dance. Freddie chose painting. But we have the same inside. The same heart. Yeah. Yeah, like connect, like you, you're doing wave, one wave, yeah, another wave, yeah, 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 oh wow, wonderful, very good, yeah, and then, uh, but he, see each other in the same time. I was born in Brazil, in Santos, it's Sao Paulo, I decided to come to New York, that was 2008. I was born in Belarus, that's between Poland and Russia, nobody knows that, usually, um, and um, I came here about six years ago. I was born in... St. Joseph's Hospital in Far Rockaway, New York. It was a long journey, but I didn't take the real step to go into a theater school until uh, about 12 years ago. I was in my 40s, and I made a choice at that point that the one thing I had to do while I was alive was that, was to go into a school. No other love have I. I had stalled for a while because most, most schools ask for an audition. And I um, thought how strange that was because I wanted to learn to act. Boom! Yeah. <laughs> okay. I came to New York, yeah, I guess about 12 years ago. I'm originally from Virginia. I got into acting quite a while ago. <laughs> I've been acting, I would say, for about maybe six years now. As the years went on, I just got more and more deeper into theater because I, I like the immediacy um, so much. I was born in, in Russia, in St. Petersburg. I moved to New York uh, in 96. For example, you will they give a cue and we'll become all fiction and we'll, and we'll go, yeah? New York, it's multicultural. It's, it's, it's not America, it's New York. It's just, it's capital of the world in a way, in many ways. Many cultures coexist together, sometimes very antagonistically. I see that our maybe work to reconcile somehow, to, 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 to make this one culture feel another. It is a diver. <laughs> Originally, RATS stood for the Russian Arts Theater and Studio, and now we kind of shorten it to just uh, the RATS company. <laughs> we thought the Chekhov would be very good for American uh, audience because Chekhov has a certain kind of humanity and uh, compassion and 
and depth that is lacking here is full of lies and of humor, compassion and love. And I, I personally need it. I, and I think people who are with me also need it. And I hope, and I sense audience need it as well. <laughs> Our work is very much into showing mm, a kind of psychophysical life in the characters that's very rich and very compelling. In the forest, in the forest, in the forest, in the forest, in the woods, in the woods, in the woods I will plow it, I will plow it, I will plow it, I will plow it, into a field. Mainly I, I, I consider myself a person who could teach Stanislavski and Michael Chekhov technique. Uh, because uh, I would love to say it is a work by layers. So to explore the character, to explore atmospheres, to explore um, language of uh, actions. I don't want people just to follow line. Line and that's it. I, I, met, I met so many actors here, working on Broadway and with perfect English. They want to follow lines. I cannot do nothing with them because they don't understand. They want to, to literally to, to deliver meaning of the line. And it is, <laughs> it's no room there, no room. It just, it's, it's only push and stupidity comes from that because a playwright didn't mean literally, especially Chekhov, he didn't mean that. I would say it is an yeah, insult to me as a Russian because Chekhov didn't write lines. If you look at his plays, nothing happened in the lines, nothing. How you can trust a line? With, <laughs> it was the beginning of absurdism. If you trust the line, it's no meaning there. I would love my show to be understood even without language. The way I approach the roles is, is basically, uh, they're all different, so... I don't really, some of them come out of movement and that's where I start with that and then some of them just come out of, um, like I hear the, the voice of the character and so I start with the voice. The first thing I ask myself is I close my eyes and I try to see the character as opposed to thinking about it because it never really helps me. So I close my eyes and I see the image of a character and I see maybe a certain elements of this character could not maybe it's not the entire person but it could just be you know one little gesture or or the certain way of um, holding her head like specific details will come to me as paintings or pictures and from there it becomes easier to sort of sketch out the the wholeness of a character some of them are open about it like me and others do it in secrets oh yes they do <laughs> It's all about the character to me, because once I know it's not me, I can be free from being self-conscious, afraid, or whatever it is that uh, limits myself as a person. So I try to go from the character. Really, the most important thing is whatever my character is doing, crying or laughing. Inside, I have to be like, yeah, this is so cool. It's just uh, this feeling of pure joy. You have to be enjoying all the time. That's what I think, and that's what helps me act. The sun was shining. And there was a white seagull on the bench. Oh well, yes, the seagull! It's like with any form of art, once you have the skill, you are free to express whatever it is that you have to express as an artist. And we, yeah, we are heavy on Michael Jacob and Stanislavski, but really um, it is not to be cerebral, it's to be free to do what you need to do out there. You're an easy man to get along with, and I'm sorry that you're leaving. I'm sorry that I'm leaving too. <laughs> Michael Chekhov discovered beautiful, beautiful, inspi inspiring ideas that are acting based on sensation. It's not, 
no, not ideas. You have to sense before you, 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 you because I, I agree with that. Um, intellect, intellect killed, killed life. So sensation never kills life. So you need to know your, your nature, sense nature, sense what you, where you're going and, and do as much, as much as the best you can. Psychophysical action, physical action, and verbal action, they cannot go together. They always go somehow, somehow just, I don't know, mm, contradicting each other. And contradiction between actions, some kind of uh, rubbing it, create life. So you don't play line, you play, so what do you mean by line? This is psychophysical action. It, but it has to be clear, what do you want? Because every time you see actor, who show his talent or want to be admiring for his some kind of personal creativity, I, I think it is an insult to me as an audience. And I don't want my actors and myself to come to invite audience to, to, to show the muscles. I, no, I, I, I think it's the last thing I want to do. It's a very strong point in our company that it's about doing something for the people who come to see us. It's not about us, it's about you. Okay, leave the person here. Who is this? Okay. Suddenly, suddenly, yeah? Okay, she's a leader. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's interesting because every Russian <laughs> knows what Stanislavski is about. And of course, many books by Stanislavski were not translated properly. Most of his work was translated in, when he was here in 1920s, and it was a bridged version, and he changed a lot. Stanislavski said this one day, that uh, play starts somewhere and goes somewhere. <laughs> it's wonderful formula, idea of inciting or initial event. So it starts with events that include every character of the play. And finish event, is, let's say main event. Everybody come on the stage, they have to be related to each other through, through one event, like Hamlet, um, funeral of the father that becomes wedding of, of, of his mother. It's an event for everybody who comes on the stage. <laughs> and every play has it. And what kind of sound it can be there? Yeah, yeah. Reality cannot mirror reality. It has to be built every time you do something. It has to be skewed every time by, by your personality. Because otherwise it is, um, it's no room to grow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I think it's cool. It's cool, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.